Hey guys, welcome back to how to use Harmer. This is video four and we're going to be talking about the resonance section. So kind of take what you learned from the filtering section and it's very related to the resonance, but this resonance module or whatever you want to call it in this synth is fantastic. And there's a lot of different options that aren't really available to most synths. So let's go to a default patch here and let's kind of dive into it. So we have a crude low pass. That's fine. Let's kind of drag this here a little bit. And let's bring a resonance kind of a little annoying exaggerated so we can kind of see what's going on so we have all these different kinds of resonance types so if we go to classic we kind of just see our, our regular resonance there and it also has a width as this uh, bandwidth had as well here so so we can really tighten that uh that resonance peak right there to how we want it so let's put that back to default. That's kind of just what that does if you were kind of curious. And let's go through some other things, other one of these. So Cuberdon, I guess, I think that's how you say it. Let's put this up kind of annoying here. And really pay attention to the brightness of it because that's really what we're kind of looking at here. And then next up we have Pedestal. Which is a little bit thicker, it kind of looks like here. Has its own unique sound to that. Then we have Sledge Hat. And these are kind of very similar, but also slightly different. So it's kind of like the different low passes, if you think of it in that sense. They're pretty much the same thing, but also slightly different. And they can work in different ways, depending on what you need. Then we have Wide Bump here. Which is pretty self-explanatory. Gives it a wide bump. That's why it's probably called that. Then we got double cone. This one's cool. So it's almost like it brings down the resonance a little bit, and then we still have this up here. And it looks really cool in the spectrum as well right there. And then we have the well, which kind of leaves a hole. And then the next up is wormhole, which is kind of like well, but just a little more exaggerated. And then if we're ever curious, like, oh, okay, what exactly is that affecting? Then we can also play with the resonance knob. You can make little holes right there in the spectrum there. And then we got the low pass. Now for one of the very, very cool features of this resonance is this. So if we click on classic, go to just a classic resonance peak. Let's tighten this up a little bit. So you can really see what's going on here. So that should be pretty obvious where the resonance peak is. So now with this OFS, this is offset. So generally with most or almost all synthesizers, their re the resonance peak is kind of, it's tied with the filter. So wherever you move the filter, so the frequency, the cutoff here, the resonance is going to follow where that peak is. And that's what you accentuate and makes it, makes it sound all very weird. So if you crank it up and you do like those types of effects, it's generally always attached to where that is. Because you see right here, the cutoff, you see this, uh, this resonance is always going to be following that. But the very cool part is with this offset, we can actually change where that is. So if we move this over here now, now we're moving this whole resonance all the way wherever we really want it to. So hopefully that's an easy demonstration of that. And then let's say, let's bring this down here a little bit more. So we're cutting off quite a significant amount. What happens if we go all the way up here and then we pass the section where our oscillator would be? Then you have another tab here that's called OSC. So you have basically a second oscillator. If we turn that up, now you have almost a separate oscillator going through here. And you can take it even past where the uh, the filter is cutting off the harmonics at the top. And it's cool to see it here in the EQ how it moves around. And this is basically the volume for that. I'm not going to turn it up all the way because it might hurt your ears, but feel free to play with that if you'd like to. And just don't hurt yourself. Turn down, turn down the volume just a little bit before you get to that. 
Okay, so that's pretty much uh, what that thing does here. So let's reset everything back to default here again. Now, a couple things we want to go through is we have the octave and hertz thing again. And uh, basically, the difference is, is the, the octave is going to sound a little bit more concentrated where the, uh, the resonance is and the hertz is going to be a little bit less concentrated. <laughs> So that's the kind of the difference right there. And then another interesting one here is this little adapt button here. So as we let's select this here and let's play from low to high and let's see what happens. So I'll turn this down just a little bit here. So as you can see, as we get lower down on the notes, So that bandwidth here changes. So if we're really low, it's kind of concentrated up here. But as we go higher, that width starts increasing there. So an interesting button to play with. Um, if you need it, it's there for you. And that's basically what that knob does. And then right here below it, you have the same thing for filter number two, the same resonance and the width and the offset, but you only have one of these self oscillating things here. So not exactly sure why there wasn't another one included, but uh, just so you know, that's why you only have one here at the, uh, at the first filter. So I believe we covered everything there. Um, oh, actually we did not. Here's a little special noise thing. This thing is actually very, very cool. And now this button here, this width here, as you can see on the left, it, it uh, changes to the noise length. So if it's really short, you get all these little dots, right? Let's turn this back up here. Now we can increase it. And it's such a weird effect. Maybe it might be cool to put on the, uh, the octave version here on our pitch. Almost sounds very robotic and weird. And if you had some interesting effects, so this is also going to filter number two, so you can kind of filter out a little bit here so let's do like a let's do like a high pass or something or even a phaser and if you add some effects to that And a lot of this is just kind of messing around, playing the different knobs and kind of just seeing what you come up with. And what's interesting too, if you bring this down really low, it almost has that watery type of sound. Like you're pouring a glass of water or something. Very strange effects. Put some unison on that. So that's just a very kind of interesting resonance peak right there. Thought I'd mention that one. I'm glad I did. And then here at the bottom, this is also cool that you remember from the last video is the custom shapes one and two. So now here you can go around and mess with whatever types of custom shapes for the resonance peak, which is a kind of a strange concept to think about and really hone it to your choice. If you did something kind of like a peak like that. Tied up that width a little bit. And really just coming on here and it's, it's kind of just mess around with whatever you whatever you come up with. It almost has that formant type of sound to it. Whoa, whoa. 
So just with an easy saw wave, a little bit of a custom shape, some unison here, and then a little bit of FX. Let's turn that on, see what that sounds like. And last little thing before we uh, let you go here, this is a very cool uh, effect here. Let's add some delay to that. T taper off that little high end there. And hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, or if you liked the video, please leave a thumbs up and a comment and let me know. And I'm thinking probably at the end of this course, we're gonna kind of tie in all the stuff that we've learned and kind of put it into a practical use. Because it's cool to understand what all the buttons do, what the knobs do, how to use the graphs and all that. But if, if there's not really a practical way to implement all of them together, it's kind of pointless in a way. And I try to always even tell myself too, like don't let the 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 the, 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 the designing of the sound kind of deter you away from making the music or the the project at hand, because we can get lost in oh this cut off frequency, this this resonance here and that, and it's cool, but try not to lose sight of what you're doing, the global picture of all of that. So with that being said, thank you for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.